Doctor, um, I'm 98. I'm suffering in so much pain. I'm, you know, I've got nothing to live for. I'm really struggling. I don't have the right medication to look after myself. I can't access the right medication. Uh, or there isn't, it just doesn't exist. I'm really suffering. Why don't you help me die, Doctor? Why can't I just end my life? Doctor, I'm a 63-year-old lady. I've got cancer in my breasts. I've got cancer in my lungs, my spine, and now it's in my um, head as well. I'm fitting. I've got no quality of life. Um, I'm really struggling. Um, thank you for all the pain relief you're giving, all the medication you're giving me to help me breathe, to avoid me having fits, seizures, and so forth. You know, but all the side effects, the fact that it takes me away from life in general, I can't participate in everyday activities. I can't even control my own bowels and my waterworks. I don't have any dignity left. I would rather end this. I would rather die. These are the types of difficult scenarios we are coming across on a daily basis now in medicine. Whether you are a GP, a family doctor or a hospital doctor, you will come across these conflicting and difficult situations where emotionally and physically it can be draining on your system. So this is the concept widely known as euthanasia. Euthanasia in itself is the act of deliberately ending someone's life so that um, you're ending their life to um, absolve them of the suffering they're in. It's typically uh, done or given to a patient such as a, a deliberate overdose of medication. This currently is illegal in the UK. So euthanasia or assisted euthanasia is not allowed in the UK as of today. And at the moment in the UK, it's a September 2020. Um, in your country, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, you will find there are similar um, rules um, applicable with the act of euthanasia. So make sure you're well aware of what's legal and what's illegal in your countries. In the UK, at this moment in time, um, euthanasia in itself is illegal. And then we have another, another concept, which is assisted suicide or assisted euthanasia. So where you are essentially um, acting um, in a position of helping somebody, assisting somebody to end their life. Um, an example would be, for example, um, um, giving them a drug. It might not be administering, it might be simply supplying them. Or in the case of some countries where you can go to, for example, Switzerland, where you can have the medication administered to you. And that will then end up uh, finishing your life once you've uh, consumed the drug or had that drug. Um, so at the moment, we have patients from UK and other countries going to countries like Sweden, Switzerland and so forth, where currently it is legal to uh, do this. As we speak in the UK, um, it prohibits um, assisted suicide. Um, that may change, of course. It's a matter of legislation. It may change in the future. What's it like in Australia? What's it like in New Zealand and Canada? What's it like in the US and other countries where you might be from? Do find out and understand the legalities behind this. The case of Tony Nicholson is of particular importance when in regards to euthanasia. Tony Nicholson's case is um, very important for us to take into account um, because Tony Nicholson campaigned tirelessly uh, for his right to die. Um, he suffered from stroke and became paralysed, neck down. So he was unable to walk, move his arms, control his bowels, his waterworks. So he became dependent completely on other people. So you can imagine the difficulties he would have been in um, after that stroke. Um, in 2012, um, he had taken his case to the High Court, uh, but the High Court refused his request to end his life. And the, what he wanted was the doctor who would help him in uh, dying should be given immunity, should avoid any criminal prosecution um, in helping him die. 
um, and of course the court then um, refused that. Um, sadly, he then went on a hunger strike or rather he refused food for long periods of time. Eventually, he died of pneumonia surrounded by his family and friends. Um, so an another significant uh, milestone in UK uh, euthanasia travel would be the assisted dying bill and that went to Parliament in 2015. It was rejected at that point uh, because um, uh, Parliament was not in favour of the bill. Um, what it would have meant was it would have stopped criminal prosecution of doctors who assist or help patients end their life. So that discussion is still ongoing in the UK and we still have the status quo where assisted dying is not possible assisted uh, uh, euthanasia is not uh, possible. Um, do think about the Simon Binner case as well. Simon Binner in 2015 and he was a sufferer of MND, motor neuron disease. Um, he could not um, um, kind of um, have euthanasia granted for him in the UK. Uh, he could not get assisted euthanasia so he then filmed himself, documented himself on his travel to his death in the um, uh, in, in, whilst going to Switzerland, uh, where it was legal for him to do so. Um, as we speak today, in Belgium, Luxembourg, Holland, um, active euthanasia is legal, and in countries such as Switzerland and Germany, active euthanasia is illegal. However, assisted suicide and passive euthanasia are both legal.